The Fed this week and Jerome Powell will be hoping to just let it pass without incident because really what they're waiting for is the full vaccine rollout and reopening of the economy. And then, even then, they will be not thinking about thinking about raising interest rates. Uh, they will want to keep the pedal to the metal. Now, there had been some concern about the rise in Treasury yields, but that's calmed down recently. And with stock markets at record highs, actually, if there was any kind of wobble, if there were higher rates and if equities did sell off, that shouldn't concern the Fed too much. If anything, Powell might very much welcome it to introduce a little bit of volatility to the market, which means they can calm down a bit about financial stability. Because as it builds and builds and builds without the volatility, then the risk of a much bigger downturn comes. So for the Fed this week, it is full steam ahead and don't frighten the horses. Not too much anyway. Q1 GDP data this week from the US on Thursday and the Eurozone on Friday. Now, this is expected to show a strong divergence with the US up around 1.8% in quarter on quarter terms, with the Eurozone down around 0.8%, which would take the Eurozone into a technical recession. Shouldn't really come as any surprise. Their economy was not that strong even before the pandemic. And of course, there have been uh, continued lockdowns and delays to vaccinations. So there'll be lots of talk about this divergence, about how the US is powering on and Europe is falling off a cliff. But let's take a step back and look at the perspective on this. A couple of percentage points up and down in GDP growth is really nothing much when you've dropped so far last year. Um, anywhere from minus 4 to minus 10%, depending on which country you're looking at. So really what's happened is we've dropped down, had a bit of a bounce back, and now we're bumping along. So really what this is all about, a uh, bigger picture, is uh, how quickly can economies reopen, but even then there will be an impairment in the velocity of people. That will keep every country's potential growth rate lower until we all adjust, which will take years. But there is no doubt that the US is on a stronger path than Europe for many structural reasons, including demographics, the tech sector, the movement of capital, etc., etc. So uh, that divergence will continue to be talked about. But um, overall, what we should be looking at is that uh, we're in for a rocky path ahead long term for growth. Another big earnings week. And as we know, markets are priced for a bonanza of awesomeness. But of course, we have now had the Indian variant, the ongoing semiconductor chip shortage, and even in countries rolling out vaccines, a plateauing of how many have been rolled out. Israel, for example, is around 62% of all adults who've now had at least one shot. So in this environment, with markets priced for such awesomeness, there is of course a risk of a correction if it, there is disappointment. And there's Apple on Wednesday who uh, will likely talk about how that semiconductor chip issue is affecting the rollout of their products. Uh, and we've got um, Amazon on Thursday. Now the problem for them is they've done so well that to keep on hitting such strong growth they've got to keep on printing a really big strong rally in profits that is at risk potentially. Now, when it comes to the market overall, one of the things that we look at is gamma. There was a huge expiry of options a week last Friday. What that really means in practice is the market can move around a lot more. Doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to go down. It could also rally up quite significantly. But you saw with the response to the Biden tax plans, which were already fairly well known, um, when the gamma position shifts, that allows the market to move. So we are set up this week for potentially more volatility. And with so much awesomeness expected, earnings are prey to disappointment.